Hello and welcome to the latest in the Lean in Ireland initiative of video series. And today I am delighted to be interviewing a fabulous senior manager across industry. And we're going to be talking about diversity and inclusion. I'm Breda McCaig. I am co-chair and co-founder of Lean in Ireland. Um, and the man I'm about to introduce you all to has been someone who has been a superb support to me when I introduced peer mentoring circles into some of the companies across Dublin. So I'm delighted to have Sean Crow with me today. Sean, will you tell us a bit about yourself? Thanks, Brida. I'm a, so I've, I'm responsible at the moment for a, a, a division in the Bank of Ireland group, the markets division. I've been in industry now since, I guess, the early 90s, where I would have started as a trader in the financial markets, which was not the most diverse world you can imagine at the time. It, would, it wouldn't be, uh, it, it, typically it was white males uh, and in a very competitive uh, type of environment. And over the years, I've worked in uh, asset management, in insurance, in, in banking, and got a good view of a, a lot of different industries. And I suppose, again, for me, over the years, I've seen the inclusion and diversity agenda evolve, and I've seen a lot more diversity in, uh, come into the businesses that I've been involved in, and I've seen the business really benefit from it. Yeah, and as have I. So it's a superb addition to where we are going. Um, and I wanted to now ask you around the business case for diversity, because it's something that I see a lot mentioned across social media and so forth. So the business case, so where is the profit or where is the bottom line and where is the other benefits to a company that gets their diversity and inclusion concepts right? Yeah, I think the, the, the business case is a no brainer at this stage. It comes from so many different aspects, even just recruiting people, hiring people. I mean, people want to work in an organization that is inclusive and that does allow for different types of people and the different people that we see in society. And I don't think any business can afford these days to be so rigid as to say, I only want this type of person that will work in this type of way. Because, you know, the talent comes in a lot of different forms and, you know, the businesses need to be open to that. I think as well, you know, customers, every business has customers and customers are of all different shapes, sizes, varieties. And a business that doesn't understand its customers is going nowhere. And the best way to understand the customer is to reflect the customer. If you have people in the organization that see that understand what a different cohorts of customer wants, you have a far better chance of success. And the third one for me, the third big one, it's just it's better decision making more diverse views to to the table, improved decision making. I'm absolutely convinced of that. So I, I think the case for inclusion and diversity is so strong. It's become, you know, I'm not sure we need to really make the case anymore. It's so obvious. Yeah. And what then, when we think about those diversities of thought coming into organizations and around business tables and making decisions, like you mentioned there, what would you say um, makes the difference to those people when they are feeling included uh, as part of a team? I think people, people, people are more inclined to speak up. You know, when when you do have the the, the classic for me, Brita, the one that, the one that always comes to mind in this. I don't know if you remember Slumdog Millionaire. Yeah. And the guy, uh, the guy who won the million in Slumdog Millionaire, who was, you know, I think a very poor guy, but he just happened to have the life experience that gave him the answer for 10 questions in a row, and he hit the million. And nobody would have thought that that guy would have had the answer to those questions. And it's the same in, in the decisions we're making every day in life. You don't know what other people have got unless, you know, they speak up and tell you. And creating an environment where they will speak up and tell you, it gives a far, far richer experience for everybody and far better decisions. Absolutely. And I know myself the difference, and I'm sure every one of us watching this knows the difference of being part of a team where you mm. feel included. So you feel like your, your voice is valuable, your experience is valuable, and what you have to contribute is very important. So... That, that's, I suppose, the magic of inclusion for me, if we get that mm. right. Um, and I've seen it done well, and it's amazing. And unfortunately, I've seen it not so well done, and yeah. that is detrimental. So, um, I mean, if we get our diversity and inclusion piece, if we understand what we're doing there and we are doing it 
from the right place. It is pure magic and, and we work with people and that's how people flourish best, I would say. And you, and you know what, I think what you said there, I'm sure we've all been on both sides of the equation. We've, we've all shut people down unintentionally, you know, and, and you know, are, are not being open to that view without even realising that we weren't, you know. I, I guess, you know, when I, when I think back to my early career, I probably wasn't as aware as I am now of, you know, different people's different experiences. I mean, the, the classic that we all talk about now is things like, you know, early morning meetings don't necessarily suit people with childcare responsibilities and things like that. But I know for years I had early morning meetings and it wasn't if, if I knew, if I thought about it and I knew that this was disadvantaging somebody or somebody had said, sorry, um, you know, I, this doesn't work for me. I'd have had no problem at all in kind of, you know, changing. But it didn't occur to me, you know, your, your un, unintentional sort of biases or just ways of doing things. We kind of need to jolt ourselves out of that. And, and I guess the more we can create an environment where people do feel that they can put up their hand and say, well, actually, this doesn't work for me. The more the more chance we have of knocking those things on the head early. Yeah, so I, like, I love you know, that you said that because um, this the self-awareness piece is where it all started for me too. Because I am sure years ago, I was probably, you know, applying my unconscious biases unwittingly. And I yeah. think that awareness is the big door that opens there. And when you start to become aware of your biases and you can treat them, you can absolutely change lives with that. And you change your own as well. I certainly did. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, and, and I think then you start to learn a bit more about empathy because yeah when you break down your own biases and you do some work on those and you start to be able to open your mind, you start to, to be able to understand what it must be like in other people's shoes, which then I think makes you a better leader because you can mm. start to, to, I suppose, accommodate other people's views, opinions better. Um, and then you start to appreciate them, invite them and welcome them and want them. So I, I think it's all entwined with good leadership. Yeah. Yeah. Teenage kids actually are a great, are a great, uh, a great help in that regard. They're willing, very willing to give um, unsolicited help in pointing out your, your natural biases or whatever. But it's really helpful because uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all want to be better leaders and we all want to make ourselves better and we all want to, we all want to do our best for our teams. And it's just kind of taking the time to reflect. And to think, you know, what what are we missing, or who aren't we bringing into the conversation that we should be bringing in? Yeah, and that's the trick: asking yourself that question: Who mm -hmm. might I be leaving out here, or who might I, whose opinion or expertise might I be missing out on by not including them or not leaving this open enough for everyone? So, yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, and last question for you, Sean, is. What advice would you have for senior leaders across industry who are probably starting a journey on diversity and inclusion? And I know many of them are, um, and they're trying to understand where to go with it, to get it right first time. Um, what would you say is your sort of personal advice for people that are trying to figure this out? I think there's such a pent up passion for inclusion and for diversity. There's a little bit of just getting out of the way and giving people the room to kind of to 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 move the agenda forward and to to express themselves in that way. But on the other hand, I think you do need to go further than just getting out of the way because you do need to. It, it goes back to that thing of, you know, we can shut things down unintentionally. You have to make a real effort to prove that you're supportive of this, you know, and that you 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 do believe in inclusion. You do believe in in, in diversity. And, you know, people can read signals and sometimes they can read them wrongly. So, you, you know, I think just an, an awareness of the signals that you're giving off and just then encouraging and celebrate diversity, celebrate inclusion and be particularly sensitive to any situations where, you know, you're, you're not doing that. And then I think if you can do that, it'll, it'll take care of itself. There's so much, so much enthusiasm so much belief in this from so many different people you know i think it, it'll it, it'll move the agenda forward and it'll be good for your business yeah 
and I've seen that in action. And I've seen you do that for me as well. I remember the first day I went in to have a chat with you about supporting Lean In. You said, Rita, what do you need me to do? And I said, mm -hmm. I like this guy. <laughs> 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 and to your other point, people will drive it for you. They'll do the pushing and the work um, and the movement. And it's very important that the senior leaders get them, those sort of people supported um, get behind them and show the right example, be open to whatever it is they're suggesting and support people who are trying to bring the best of themselves to your organization. So couldn't agree more. Couldn't yeah. agree more. Well, Sean, it has been a pleasure to spend some time with you and to get some of those very valuable insights. You have a wealth of experience across industry and I'm sure many people today will be very delighted to have some of that uh, quality expertise that they can pro probably put to use themselves. So thank you so much for your time. Super Breeders, thank you. Thanks for, uh, thanks for inviting me to ask, answer a few questions. Thanks yeah. very much.